Oh my goodness, imagine being just this poor squad of light infantry being physically pushed off of the point that they're defending by an unstoppable wave of angry doggos. My goodness. I mean, this is just this is just a thumbnail right here. It's just, it's perfect. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rome Total War. This was one of my first ever strategy games, which made me go, my goodness, this gaming malarkey is absolutely incredible. Now, naturally, Rome Total War is a beloved game by me. In my honest opinion, this is one of the greatest games in existence, and if you haven't played it, you're really missing out on something special. Now, naturally, that means in today's modern graphics, it uh, doesn't hold up very well, but you know, it's charming, okay? It's a charming game, ladies and gentlemen. And with the charm comes a vast quantity of bugs, because my goodness, this game, whilst it is an experience, it's not a perfectly balanced experience, I can tell you that much. I know, that's right, I lied in the title. Rome Total War isn't a perfectly balanced game with no exploits. No, if anything, it's quite the opposite. It's a game with quite possibly one of the largest collection of exploits slash imbalanced features that I've ever seen. And I absolutely love it for it. Now we're going to be playing ourselves a little bit of this game and showing off some of its greatest features. But before we start, when you think of Rome Total War or any Total War game set in history, you probably think that it's actually a very accurate game with lots of well thought out and balanced features that reflect history at the time. Well, then again, you'd be kind of wrong. Because if you were to follow history through the eyes of Rome Total to war, you're going to end up with some strange things. For example, if you play as the Romans, you effectively are playing three different chapters of Space Marines, the red ones, the green ones, or the blue ones. And don't even get me started on the Parthians. Okay, take a look at the Parthian faction, guys. Why is an entire faction's lineup and unit roster wearing bright pink? I'm just going to have to point out that buying clove dye in order to dress yourself up in bright pink at the time was a little bit more expensive than the average peasant could afford. But sure, if you want to feel 240 peasants or wearing bright pink costumes, then go for it. Now, welcome into the game. We're playing as the red faction of effectively the Roman Space Marines, and these guys are stupidly powerful because they're mostly fighting barbarians. Now, when it comes to fighting barbarians, there are a million strategies you could use. You could use advanced technologies, crazily advanced formations, maybe long-ranged weapons, or instead, what if you just used dogs? Like, lots of dogs. Like, we're talking, uh, large mass of dogs, to the point where if you saw this large amount of dogs in public, you'd probably actually f swear fealty to them, because at this point they have more power than any of us ever will. So just what is this strategy that I'm going to be pulling off today? Well, it's really something, ladies and gentlemen, so make sure you're sat back, relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand, and you're ready for one of the most broken strategies any strategy game has ever seen. It's a dog-only army. Now, war dogs are a pretty weak unit, because if we take a look at their statistics here, total defense of 3 and an attack of 10. That's not the best. However, we're not fighting with regular chumpy war dogs. We're fighting with Quintus Julius's mad boys. Allow me to demonstrate to you the mega war dog. Bam. Now it's got a defense of 9 and an attack of 16. This is a mega war dog. It only costs 48 gold to upkeep, meaning it is ridiculously cheap, it moves ridiculously fast, and it frightens all nearby units. It does a stupid amount of damage. This here is an upgraded Praetorian cohort, a pretty decent late game unit. And look at that, it does 14 melee attack. This unit of war dog here does more damage than a Praetorian cohort. This is a terrifying army, and one which, whilst statistically wouldn't win any auto-resolve fights, is about to decimate the Gaulish army that just tried to ambush us. We'll be facing off against 1,500 men with an army comprised of 1,000 dogs. This is going to be perfectly balanced. <laughs> oh god, let deployment start. Now, um, we zoom in, we can kind of hear the barks of the dogs, and uh, things are about to get very spicy. Uh, we're just basically going to want to group up every single dog we have and blob them into one basically dense location, and then, well, for the rest of our army, we can kind of just sit back here and observe the dog brigade, right? So the enemy reinforcements have arrived, but I don't really think we need to worry about them, and instead, it's time we release the hounds, right? Hounds, away! Go by good sausages. You'll be fantastic. I believe in you. Now, of course, we're not actually that early into the game and I've actually just basically power leveled the Roman faction using peasants to build one really powerful city allowing me to get the forges necessary to give war dogs armor. I don't know why the war dogs are wearing probably more armor than these topless men over here, but for some reason these dogs are packing the latest in chainmail technology. Alright, so what are we against? We're against some light topless spear boys and some more light topless spear boys and oh my goodness, in come the dogs. Right now, immediately the dogs will start
start attacking and uh, they'll start doing some great damage. Now, dogs can't really be hit. As soon as they get hit, they're pretty much killed instantly. However, these aren't your regular dogs. These are dogs with the ability to take down horses. Let's take down their commander. Why not? There we go. That's the first unit routing because it's fleeing from battle. Lovely stuff. As soon as one unit starts fleeing, they all start fleeing. There we go. That's the next unit routed. Oh my goodness. There's another one going. Oh, the enemy general is routing, basically meaning the enemy army is going to start running away as well. Honestly, the dog only meta, very powerful. Stupidly powerful, in fact. The only downside of the dog only meta is um, once the dogs start chasing something, they're going to keep chasing it. <laughs> I mean, these guys are going to technically rally back, but yeah, uh, not very fast. Yeah, okay. You guys are just going to break again. Oh my god, just look at them. This is an entire squad of 144 men running from a couple of angry dogs. And now the entire enemy army is routing. Look at it go. It's just terrified. I mean, to be fair, if you're in a fight and you're facing off an enemy, which is famed for swords and shields and nice decent bits of cavalry, and you're like, okay, fine, let's bring our spear boys to take down the cavalry. Let's bring some horses to fight the infantry. But no, he doesn't bring that army. He instead brings an army of over 1,000 dogs. That's when you're going to start realizing, hang on a second, this battle's not being fought very fairly. Now, sadly, the dogs have now started running off of the map, which does make them a little bit of a pain to bandage, but oh well. Oh well. It's not like we're going to lose this fight anyway. No, the dogs are not coming back. They're not coming back at all. Right, that's fine. Oh, and there we go. Another enemy general is dead. Uh, that's hopefully going to just rout the enemy army again. Yep, that's um, exactly what's going to happen. They're attacking some war dogs over there. No, these are just the peasant handlers. They weren't built for combat. Oh, they attacked my war dog men. Oh, wait, no, the dogs are coming back. Oh, my God, the dogs are coming back. They were not happy to hear that their owners were getting attacked. And so, yep, now the enemy's routing. Oh, right, let's end this battle. That was perfect. So, enemy managed uh, around about 60 kills there. We've managed in turn uh, 1,252, all off with the back of a whole bunch of dogs. Now, technically, more dogs did die, but dogs just instantaneously respawn after the battle making them an immortal army of super soldiers which are pretty much a nightmare to kill because they'll rout your army before you can actually even fight them back. Ah, oh, what a lovely glorious battle. Okay, now we're going to put the dogs to a further test. This is our lovely dog army, but this time it's fighting a siege battle. Not a siege defense, a siege attack. That's right, we're going to be using dogs to attack this settlement. It's not a common strategy, I will say that. Most people don't use attack dogs for settlement wars, but that's exactly what we're going to do because we can. Now all we have to do is just group the dogs up once again, break down the front door, and then immediately send in a horde of angry doggos. And these angry doggos, trust me, they are very angry. These are dogs that have just realized that when their owner pretended to throw the ball, he didn't actually throw the ball and he had the ball in his hand the whole time, but they're absolutely fed up with it and they really want revenge now. So that's exactly what we're seeing from these doggos. Right now we're going to be able to break down the reinforced gates and of course the uh, wall as well. This will happen nice and quickly. And of course, once we break it down, no, we won't be attacking with our garbage infantry. We're going to be using the doggos. Right, so we'll just keep all of those men sat there and time to set the hounds. Right, hounds, you know what to do. Here come the hounds, here come the hounds. I'd be terrified if I saw this. We broke down the wall as well, perfect. And here come the dogs. In through the front gate they go. It's a terrifying prospect to see, but you know, um, it's up to these ghoul swordsmen, heavy infantry, you see. They say victory is a distinct possibility. However, uh, the the dogs do just keep coming. They, they are not stopping. There is an endless wave of them here. Uh, defeat is now a distinct possibility. It's not looking good for these swordsmen. They are getting slightly frightened, but they are a little bit impetuous. Uh, so things are okay. Oh my goodness, just the sea is coming in now. It's um, it's terrifying. They are not going to win this, I'm afraid, no. All right, let's just bring our horses inside the walls as well for fun. Just to, you know, really hype up these dogs. Just do a little rally the troops here. That'll really spice things up a bit. Oh, and the uh, enemy swordsmen have just routed. And the dogs are just going to keep going. Uh, they're not going to stop. Oh my god, they're just going to keep going. There's a barbarian chieftain warlord there. One of a lovely heavy cav unit. Theoretically perfect for fighting dogs, but no. No, it's actually terrible at fighting dogs. All right, now I've got my general charging in here just because uh, most of the enemy army is now just routing because they can't actually fight the dogs. However, the dogs, uh, they're not going to stop. Um, the reasoning is simple because as soon as a unit routes in a siege defense, it runs back to the town center. And then once in the town center, it becomes unbreakable. The only issue is the dogs will never stop coming. Now, 
theoretically, if we didn't win this siege in our first attack, we could quite simply retreat. And so far, we've had zero casualties because dogs dying just immediately respawn. So you can redo sieges as many times as you like, break one hole in the wall, unleash 1,000 dogs, kill about 2,000 men, and then retreat and do it all over again with a brand new wave of dogs. It is not fair, it is not balanced, but it is very entertaining. Oh my goodness, imagine being just this poor squad of light infantry being physically pushed off of the point that they're defending by an unstoppable wave of angry doggos. My goodness. I mean, this is just this is just a thumbnail right here. It's just, it's perfect. There we go. They're, um, they're all dead. Um, you can tell because the frames dropped to 2 FPS. So, in that entire fight, we lost 10 soldiers and we killed 637 men and won a siege, which the auto-resolve said we probably should not be winning. Glorious stuff. What a fantastic win there. Now, of course, the AI diplomacy in Rome Total War is famous for being um, pretty spicy because, for example, the AI of Gaul here now wants us to pay them 2,000 gold and hand over all of the cities which I've taken in this war. Now, I just want you to know that is not a sound military idea for us considering we are absolutely smashing them. Oh my goodness, lovely. We're actually being attacked by a proper army now. This is an army of over 2,000 men now deciding to defend their settlement against our mega doggo stack. Right, let us our deployment start now we're at a pretty fun spot because we can deploy right in the corner of the map here with our actual army and then just deploy as many dogs as feasibly possible up here as well okay well you know the unit placement is not the best in this game um, because sometimes it will just break right okay we're going for the phallus uh, strategy here of just men to the left right and a forward protruding object all right we'll wait for the enemy army to actually pull up close to us and then we're going to do a mass charge of doggos into them now this is an actual proper enemy army in front of us this is over 2,000 men against a much smaller army here theoretically we shouldn't be winning this however the power of the dog knows feasibly no bounds and the issue is attacking us with a massive wave of light infantry is not going to actually help you. Heck, they've even got some range units thrown in there for good measure. Right, it's time. Release the doggos. And away they go, ladies and gentlemen. Full speed ahead for all of the dogs now. Straight into the enemy front line they go. Of course, the enemies are wrongly believing that they actually stand a chance here. Now, of course, in order to protect our dogs for future battles, we're going to be running all of the peasants back whilst the dogs immediately have broken the front line there. There we go. That's the first unit break and there we go that's the second unit breaking the enemy general is now dead on the floor <laughs> oh my god let's bring the dog handlers back come on we got to keep you safe at the back oh well the enemy army is just breaking like paper against our men I'm throwing in a couple of cavalry charges for fun just to really mop up some of the enemy heavy infantry so that we don't have to worry about them later now the dogs are currently just chasing after a stack of two soldiers and honestly that's fine there's not really much we can do to stop the dog AI at this point oh and there we go the enemy general is now dead as well perfect stuff Oh wow, the entire enemy army is just completely routing on the spot against us. Well, this is a great sign. <laughs> My goodness, what a glorious success for us. Now, of course, dogs are also brilliant at mopping up almost every single routed unit on the map because they run at such incredible speed, they will just literally pick up anything. We can't really see it very well, but there is a wave of almost a thousand dogs just running around, just walking into various routing <laughs> units and just evaporating them on the spot. My goodness, almost none of the enemy army is going to survive. Nope. 30 men survived. Only 30 men made it off the battlefield. The dogs killed 2,000 men. Oh my god. God, what a battle that was. It's just not fair. Dogs are not fair at all. They're not balanced in any way. And the best thing is, even when we do take losses with the dogs, you can just spend a very small amount of cash just healing them all up. It's remarkably simple. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how to completely and utterly destroy the balance of this game with a stack of just dogs. They are so stupidly broken. Absolutely, absolutely insanely broken. Now, of course, that's not all that Rome Total War has to offer in terms of game breaks, because coming up next, we have the incredible Scythian horse archer meme build, which once again the AI has feasibly no counter to, and it's even easier to pull off in the early game. So make sure to refill your cups of Yorkshire tea and hop on down to the comment section to praise the war doggo before he bites off your hand, which would make it impossible for you to either like or subscribe to a video ever again. Let's go see what Scythia can do. We start out as the Scythians. These are effectively semi-nomadic horse peoples running around the regions of Ukraine and Russia and the various steeps. In terms of strategic control, 
control and historical significance, these guys are pretty much brushed under the rug, because more exciting things were happening over here in Rome. But what were the Scythians good at? Well, they were good at horse archers, which is why we start out the game with a whole bunch of these lovely guys. Statistically speaking, they're not very good. They can't fight in close combat well at all. They're not very good at charging. However, what really makes them quite powerful is the fact that they're an archer unit and they're on the back of a horse. And they're also one of the bloody fastest units in the game. This makes them terrifyingly powerful because they are almost impossible to catch, meaning the AI cannot defeat a band of Scythian horse archers because they can't touch a band of Scythian horse archers. They have incredible range and incredible damage, making them one of the most powerful units in the game. Now in terms of opening move for a faction of entirely horses, we basically want to throw ourselves into the lovely region of Campus Gate here. This is a Thracian city and Thrace doesn't exactly have that many friends. In fact they don't even have that many cities, I think they only have two, meaning they'll be relatively easy to knock out. So we're immediately just going to jump on out of our city with our faction leader. We could actually recruit ourselves an additional Scythian mercenary. This would be basically just yet another bonus horse archer and you know what, we might as well. And then as soon as we go around the corner we can actually pick up a melee unit, a Thracian mercenary. So this is brilliant because we actually do need a melee unit to actually siege a region and as fun as using peasant mobs are, generally best to actually have an army with you. So we're going to attack Thrace next turn as soon as we have a few more men and until then we just need to basically fix up all of our lovely cities. Luckily the Thracian army has decided to walk outside of their large town which is perfect for us because that's going to allow us to just walk straight on over to them and hopefully bait them into a fight outside of their own city walls and oh my goodness they've accepted lovely stuff. Now we could auto resolve this and win but we're instead going to fight this manually. The reason is simple we're going to be attacking an army of mostly infantry on open plains using archers and horse archers. This is not going to be a balanced fight. Right let's start our lovely deployment. So the enemy is going to be appearing over there. Logically I just want my infantry and archers to just sit around and not do much and instead we'll have our horse archers cause lots of lovely chaos on the flanks. Oh my goodness the reinforcements are coming from our rear. This is perfect stuff. Oh my goodness this is absolutely great news. As long as the enemy in front of us decides to stay perfectly still we're in a prime spot to decimate the enemy reinforcements before they even arrive. So how are we able to decimate enemy reinforcements? Well it's very simple. We have horse archers. These are archers on the back of horses that can go nice and quickly. They move very quickly. They generally don't get stuck on objects and the benefit of them being able to outrun everything basically means they won't ever get attacked because they're just so quick. So what do we have happening over here? Well our horse archers have begun firing. These are one of the few units in the game which can actually run and shoot at the same time so naturally they're going to start attacking the various bodyguard units of the reinforcements and of course if they start charging at us like this heavy infantry unit is we can just start running in the opposite direction because all of our units have skirmish on meaning they will just run away from the enemy resulting in this very interesting chase where a heavy cavalry unit is never going to catch up with our actual army. The same can be said for this unit of unarmored flaxmen charging into cavalry. Yeah these guys are not going to have a good day because well you guessed it they can't actually catch up to the unit they're fighting and equally being topless in the snow with long knives is not going to protect you from lots and lots of shooty arrows. Now it turns out the main Thracian army decided to even attack us as well and well that hasn't gone very well for them. They're actually starting to retreat so I guess our charge is going to have to begin. Wow they've just straight up fled the field of battle. What cowards. Ah oh, what lovely stuff. The cowards they fled but uh, that means we've clearly won the battle. We did sadly lose one horse to a friendly fire incident because you know these units have friendly fire and it's very easy to accidentally shoot yourself in the back. So there we go. We lost one single horse dude and we defeated a nice large portion of their army so they're never going to be returning. Now after that fantastic fight we're in a lovely situation to attack the retreated army in their own little settlement. Now we could of course auto resolve this and in fact it might be a good idea. So well bam it's auto resolve time. Oh my goodness we lost that. Come on you said that I was going to win that. I'm devastated right we're fighting that ourselves. Damn it AI auto resolve you're so bad. <laughs> now if you've ever played this game yourself make sure to give me a shout because I'm honestly amazed by how little Rome Total War gets talked about nowadays. It is such a lovely game. It's full of charm. It's full of in-jokes. It's full of references. It is just pure nonsense humor and I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. Right it's time for us to start this lovely battle. So trying to siege an actual settlement from the enemy. A little bit more exciting and spooky because the enemy now have defenses on their walls. Now what we're going to do is send a lovely battering ram in to knock down those walls and also send up a unit of horse archers to start attacking the various enemy defensive units on the other side of the walls. And you know we can actually also march up with our various peasants.
peasant archers because they are lovely affordable disposable units. Now once again the perks of having range units are that you can shoot at enemies that can't shoot back like say all of these lovely militia hoplites. Once again I sat in a prime spot to be shot at. Lovely stuff. That'll teach you for trying to defend your own settlements. Oh lovely stuff. They thought they could bring out some archers of their own to fight ours but of course uh, enemy archers aren't going to win against our archers because we have simply so many of them. Equally if you want to make this additionally cheesy you can just set loose formation to all of your troops so that that way they're almost impossible to hit. Now loose formation on horse archers are just absolutely broken <laughs> because it means they can dish out so much damage to enemy formations and they will never get attacked because they will outrun everything. I don't know who allowed them to be added into the game because they just don't fundamentally work. They're as fast as light cavalry units meaning you can't catch them so the only way to kill them is with logically I don't know a ranged ballista but that's not very efficient at taking out fast moving cavalry because cavalry can dodge ballistas. <laughs> anyway we've almost made our way through the wooden gates and then once we're in the city it's pretty much over for them. There we go we've made it in. All right now what we'll do is we'll have one of our units enter the city and this will cause the AI to panic and send something to defend. Yep there we go and now this will allow us to once again get lovely shots onto the enemy archers. Hey, you know what? let's switch to flame arrows this will be fun. Oh you peasant peltists. So far we haven't been hit by anything but we have just committed a war crime by lighting peasants on fire. All right now what we're going to do is cheese the uh, town center mechanic by having our lovely archers sit behind a nice defensive wall and lob arrows over at the enemy's heavy infantry. Actually why not the enemy's general bodyguard unit? Why not? Yeah that will be fun. Yes yeah, so we now get to pepper the enemy's units in their town center uh, whilst they're not going to attack us because the enemy has evaluated that our threat is too high and they don't want to attack us. Oh and here come the flaxmen lovely heavy infantry now sadly they're not going to win although a couple of my <laughs> ranged cavalry decided to charge into them. Oh well that's fine right let's send the general bodyguard in let's finish up this fight. Oh and lovely we've slain the enemy general and immediately his forces have routed so that's a victory for us lovely stuff. We did lose quite a few chod infantry mostly general bodyguard units and our lovely mercenary sacrificial infantry unit but beyond that there was a lovely first siege. Now I want to kind of finish off the actual armies of phrase I'm not too sure whereabouts they are. So we're going to pick everyone up, excluding my lovely faction leader, and take them on a super fun adventure to go see the world. Now we have just discovered a real Thracian army. This is a proper one. Look at it. It's led by the legendary Skylus, and it's a pretty meaty boy full of a whole bunch of units. So we're actually going to have to retreat and wait for additional reinforcements to arrive. Now we're about to fight a pretty evenly balanced battle against some rebels, and naturally we're about to make this evenly balanced battle into something which is isn't very fair. Right, so we have five units of Scythian horse archers here and a lovely general bodyguard, although we're not really going to need to use it, as we're about to start with our lovely classic patent pended strategy of just rushing down the enemy with horse archers. It's just a rebel army, so it's not like we have much to fear, although they do have a large amount of range, which means we're going to hit the patent pended everyone into loose formation strategy. And here we go, we can now open fire upon the enemy forces. Ah, oh, lovely stuff. But oh no, the rebel captain is charging us. Whatever shall we do? Well, we're just going to run in the opposite direction. That's what we're going to do. Oh, these poor rebel armies. They just don't stand a chance. They're not even shooting back. These archer units just going to stare at us. Poor Nigel and his 150 cousins all coming out here with their bows and arrows. All right, come on. You guys can shoot back any day now. Any day. The issue is the AI does struggle to shoot back for the sole reason that because the horse archers move around so much, they just don't know what to do. Um, it's now raining arrows from the skies and uh, things are not looking too great. You know, we're just going to charge down one of the peasant archers. Sorry guys. This is a general bodyguard unit so it's going to decimate you. Right, we're now going to shoot the enemy general bodyguard unit in the back uh, which will do increased damage because that's how the game worked. Seriously it's actually quite ahead of its time. If you shoot a unit in the back where it doesn't have a shield it will take more damage. It just makes perfect sense. Honestly these developers were really ahead of their time in terms of game design. There we go. The enemy general has given up now. He's not going to last very long though. Oh this poor guy. Oh my goodness. Look at him run away. It's still raining outside, you know. You can't run very fast. There's only three dudes left in your bodyguard. Right, I guess we just select everything and have them attack the one remaining archer unit of 50 dudes. Oh my goodness, this isn't even fair. Also, these aren't even very highly expensive units. The Scythian horse archers, pretty damn cheap. Only 110 upkeep per turn. That is surprisingly affordable. Oh, anyway, um, they managed to kill 62 units. We killed 455. I'd say all in all, glorious success of a battle there. And what's great is every time you do a fight there's a chance your commander can improve so our lovely faction air here just picked up good commander making him even stronger. Now what we're going to do is just march straight on down to the enemy 
capital city. Hopefully we'll just be able to mop them up very quickly. And I'm pretty sure we're ready for our siege on the Scythian capital here. This will be a glorious success. Now in terms of our faction's powers and weaknesses, it's actually weak against late game armies. Like for example the Romans, once they get online towards the end of this game, they have massively heavily armoured units which are terrifying. However, by the time we reach that point of the game, we're able to recruit mercenary units which can perfectly counter whatever the Romans decide to throw at us. Anyway, it's time for us to start this lovely battle. We have a ridiculously large army. I mean, just look at it. It is terrifying. No one would want to face this. But most importantly, I've brought two special bonus units. These are war dogs. All right, let's start this battle by knocking down that wall, moving up some infantry behind it. They've got some missile cavalry as well. Lovely stuff to complete that game, I see. Oh, we've got some flaxmen here. Lovely. These are topless dudes without any body armor, which means flaming arrows, absolutely perfect at dealing with them. Or actually just anything, really. A strong pointy stick will take out flaxmen. Now, I do feel sorry for the AI because the issue is the game is telling the AI that it needs to defend this wall. But at the same time, it really can't. There's nothing it can do. It's just going to get peppered by arrows if it tries to put any unit near the door. And there we go. That door has now just been broken through. Now, there's a whole bunch of angry pelters here as well as some militia hoplites and I do kind of want to decimate them before we actually get into the city so I'm going to get all of these lovely men get them into a loose formation and send them straight at the walls all right and now the chaos can begin a whole bunch of pelters which can't shoot back as well as a bunch of retreating militia hoplites yep this is fair and perfectly balanced all is fair and broken in Rome total war is that the saying I'm pretty sure that's the saying oh lovely stuff lots of perfect damage admittedly we do get shot back here by this little tiny tower box but I mean it is it's only decimating the occasional horse and that's a sacrifice I'm more than willing to take why are my archers engaged in melee combat why did they win in melee combat that's the even greater question what went wrong there now in comes the enemy's pelters cavalry lobbing spears the only issue is um we throw a lot more back than they can actually dish out meaning this is a guaranteed win here sorry guys but lightly armored men in t-shirts riding horses with sticks and pointy ends is not going to win against the massive army that we have I mean it's just insane the fact that we can have horses sat on top of these hills back here still throwing arrows in oh and they just can't be shot back at so they always win it's terrifying what you can do in this game now where are the dogs going because the dogs just keep attacking they don't ever stop they don't ever return to the handlers they just kind of keep on running around the battlefield it would appear that they have glitched themselves on the terrain here yep okay this game it's not perfect <laughs> it's got its issues quite a few of them in fact but we still love it it's a precious game oh look the enemy cavalry is trying to charge us right well release the doggies oh, they'll, they'll be able to completely break our garbage militia unit but they won't be able to break a massive battle force of war dogs yes now that's a guaranteed success oh my goodness my poor little men I kind of left them undefended so they've accidentally been charged by a metric ton of cavalry but it's okay we can fix this situation just by you know shooting from beyond the walls in an unreachable position where the general bodyguards cavalry is never going to wander to what I love about the horse archers is even though I'm currently relocating my army so technically they shouldn't be able to shoot they still can um yep yeah, they're fine they're just trying to run through the gates at the moment but normally when units queue up to go through the gates they become completely useless but no these guys can still shoot shots which is brilliant <laughs> honestly we just kind of need to sit them in the walls they don't even need to go anywhere and they'll still manage to break most of the enemy's army oh and lovely the enemy general is dead so that's going to cause most of their army to rout which is perfect because when an army is routing you can just kind of charge down their units anyway we took more casualties than i'd like to mostly due to my own mismanagement but i I'd say, all in all, a glorious success of a fight. Alright, and here we go. I think this is perfectly fine. We have the final enemy unit sat in a tiny box where they can't escape, just getting peppered by massive rains of arrows falling from the sky, and lovely stuff. A great and glorious success for all of our men. And that's the entire Thracians defeated off of this map. And there we go. Thrace as an entire faction is now destroyed. Lovely stuff. Ooh, Greece wants to go into an alliance with us. Sure, why not my friends? Because at this point, as fun as it would be to go down into Greece and fight them, there is honestly no need for us. Instead, whilst we could fight Macedonia, it makes much more sense for us to go up to Dacia and sweep through all of the Germanic tribes. Why on earth do we want to fight the Germanic tribes? Well, unlike most factions in the game, the Germanic tribes have not invented clothing yet, meaning they're surprisingly easy to take down. Anyway, we've got a slight rebel issue here, because there was one living family member remaining on the map, so we're going to send an army of two horse archers over, and sure, it says we're actually not going to win this one, we are. It's 57 men versus two squads of horse archers which can outrun said 57 men. It is physically impossible for us to lose. Alright, you know what to do. Go 
fight the rebels. Do 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 And then once they're in range, the enemy general unit is just gonna stand there. Oh, welcome to death, my friend. Yep, you're being attacked. What are you gonna do about it, enemy general? You're gonna do something, or you're just gonna sit there on your horse with your funky looking sword and just yep, yep, that's exactly what you're gonna do. Groundbreaking AI, ladies and gentlemen. Truly groundbreaking AI. Okay, for its time, this was actually incredible. The fact that you could have AI which would focus on flanking and doing interesting fights. It put up a little bit of a challenge on the maximum difficulties, but that was mostly just because it was continuously cheating. But you know, it, it adds to the charm. Anyway, in come all of the arrows. This is going to take a while because they're a heavily armored unit and I can't be bothered to flank them. So we're just going to sit here and let all of the shots rain on. There we go. And we have now performed the horse archer sandwich, basically meaning the AI doesn't know which way to face us with its one unit. And we have now won the battle. Yep, this is uh, completely perfect because if it chases the army on the right, it will just outrun it and be chased by the army on the left. And if it chooses to turn around and face the army on the left, the army on the right will shoot it in the back. And so it's just going to choose to run back and forth against both of these stacks and uh, catch none of them. This is high, high quality gameplay right here. The enemy army is routing. There we go. Good job. What a great fight that was. We did excellent. Anyway, we're going to be taking our army on a lovely, fantastical adventure back up north to go and invade the Dacians, I think. Why not? That'll be good fun. I swear sometimes I don't fully understand how this game works. For some reason, the barbarian cavalry unit here has lower upkeep than this peasant. Peasant upkeep 100 gold per turn. Barbarian cavalry 90. Archers 170 to upkeep. They're not worth it. Look at these Scythian horse archers. 110. You save so much money by having Scythian horse archers and they dish out so much more damage. Oh well, the AI does work in mysterious ways, which I guess we'll never fully learn. Now fighting the Dacians is going to be an absolute walk in the park. The reasoning is simple. The Dacians here have some units. These units are Falksmen. They have incredibly good attack stats. And you know, their total defense is good, but their total defense comes from their defense skill, meaning how good they can parry swords, rather than their physical armor, because as you can tell, Gerald here hasn't actually worn clothes in the last 70 winters. This means that sure, whilst most Falksmen die normally of pneumonia, they're also exceedingly vulnerable to any ranged assault. Right, it's now time for us to attack Dacia. Here we go. Time to go to war. This will be lovely and spicy. Right, here comes the legendary Siege of Perilicillium, which features one set of archers and two sets of flexmen versus a massive cavalry horde of 2,000 horse archers. Yep, one person's gonna win this war and it's gonna be me. Oh, they've put a whole bunch of men near the front door. Oh dear. Right, let's go break down those wooden gates, but at the same time, let's just go line up a whole bunch of horse cavalry near the walls and uh, see how the AI responds. And here we go, the shooting will now commence. A whole bunch of archer warbands versus superior ranged cavalry. Hmm, who could win this fight? Well, the archers don't think they're gonna win, so they've immediately started running away. Well, it's off to a flying start, I'd say. Great stuff. Let's go break down this front door. There we go. We've broken through the walls. Lovely stuff. So let's send a nice large quantity of our troops inside the walls just to spook the remaining men sat on top of the top. Because I'm pretty sure we can stand here and shoot to the town square. No, we need to move up a little bit more. Very well. Horses move up just a little bit more and fight the 300 strong stack of topless dudes. Oh my goodness. Look at these lovely topless dudes. Topless dudes, what are you going to do? You're getting shot at. What do topless dudes do? And such reckless hate has been thrown their direction. Well, they're just going to walk slowly into the path of the arrows. Um, this is going to have a bold choice. Oh, and apparently this one horseman has decided to charge headfirst into them. Good stuff. And uh, the rest of them should all start running away now at high speed. Yep, in comes our lovely retreat. Oh, and actually that was the general and they're routing. Oh, goodness. Oh, yes, in come the arrows. Here they come. Oh, they're just looking brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. There we go. Glorious success. The battle is ours. Very few casualties as one of Dacia's cities now belonging to ours. Now here's a fun thing. What you can do is you can actually bribe enemy armies. So apparently this army of men just wants 1,500 gold and now they will no longer exist. So there we go. An entire Dacian army which just existed there just vanished for 1,000 gold. Heck, you can even bribe entire cities here. Oh, sadly this guy's not going to take it. But sometimes you can force entire settlements to flip. Right, we're now going to defeat the Dacian capital and it's defending High King with his nice army of his own. The the only issue is, of course, his army won't be able to get outside the walls, and we can shoot over the walls, basically turning any city into what should be a fight to actually break through into a fight of shooting fish in a barrel. All right, let's send all of our lovely men up. All right, horses, you know what to do. Open fire, my lovely horse archers. Cause chaos. Yes, good. Defeat the enemy warlord heavy cavalry before it can even 
fire. And of course, move out of the way of the annoying turrets which are going to shoot you. Oh, and sadly, the squad of Falksmen has uh, almost entirely collapsed before the battle has started, as is tradition. Here we go, lovely stuff. We've managed to break down the front gate, meaning we can now just walk straight inside of their settlement, which is perfect, because inside there we can no longer get shot at. All right, perfect. I've moved our massive blob of horse archers inside of the enemy walls. What do we have here to fight? Well, we have some Dacian light infantry as well as some, uh, well, there's just the general unit. Lovely stuff. So I guess all we need to do is just walk up a little bit closer. All right, man, open fire. You know what to do. It's 230 lightly armored units. Yes, they have a shield, but it's not really going to do much. And of course, you guys are failing to actually use the skirmish mode, right? I'll have to micro you myself. Oh my goodness, it's actually working. They are actually taunting the enemy units and running around in circles. Although they have just been caught by the enemy general unit. Ah, oh, that is smidge frustrating. Oh no, we killed the enemy general. Good stuff. All right, that's going to make finishing this off a fair bit easier. And lovely stuff. There we go, glorious stuff. We only lost 100 men in that lovely siege. Now, losing 100 men in a siege in the year of 259 BC is absolutely incredible. Oh, and sadly, our faction leader has died. What a shame. I mean, it's perfectly fine. It was very much expensive expected to happen and if anything it's made our brand new faction leader even more powerful. So we're going to be taking our brand new faction leader and send him out to war because look there's an enemy faction leader just in front of us lovely stuff. I mean I don't even know what the Dacian army is up to at this point just sending lightly armored stacks of chod into deadly battles against cavalry. Yeah this poor AI just wasn't designed to fight like this. The AI was designed to fight against Romans using nice little dense clustered formations of ranged units sat behind front line infantry and then charging the frontline infantry to try and get to the range units. That is what the AI was meant for. The AI was not designed for whatever the heck we're doing. All right, here comes the fighting. Oh, you poor guys. Oh, light infantry, you were not designed to cross open fields against archers. Oh, no, no, no. You're even getting attacked at the flank. You're getting attacked from behind. Nothing's going well for you, light infantry. Nothing at all. I mean, look, this guy even brought his favorite little flag to work. Okay, it's, it was bring your flag to work day. This guy spent an entire week painting his flag and now he's gonna die. What a poor little guy. If only he had not joined the Dacian Empire and instead joined the really pimping Scythian Empire which is 90% cooler than any Dacian Empire. Alright, I'm sending the dogs in for fun because the dogs have a habit of breaking every little bit of morale. So in you go doggies. Look at them charge. Okay, here comes the cavalry. Right now, hopefully, yep, the cavalry for some reason uh, famously can't defeat dogs because they just trip over them or get body blocked by them, making dogs the perfect speed bump against literally anything because now the heavy cavalry is focused on the dogs and so he's gonna get absolutely massacred by our ranged oh my god what on earth even is this fight this isn't even a fight it's just a general's bodyguard unit getting attacked by really angry doggos and there we go the enemy general is defeated lovely stuff so they killed nine units we managed to kill um, a lot glorious success I'd say very very profitable as well anyway ladies and gentlemen I'm afraid that's all I have time for today I hope I've showed off one of my most favorite games of all time because Rome total war it's lovely Lovely. I strongly recommend you pick it up, especially when it's on sale. It's incredibly cheap for the amount of fun you're going to be getting out of it. As always, if you have indeed enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like as it does massively help us out. And as always, if you have any suggestions as to what games you'd like to see me break next, then hop down to the comment section and give me your suggestions. Because I'm sure there are a million games that I've never heard of which are just absolutely perfect and waiting to be decimated by a little bit of British magic and a whole bunch of Yorkshire tea. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much. Without you, I wouldn't be able to play really old games like this and show them off to an audience of people who maybe weren't even alive for this game's release because, yeah, this game, it's an absolute gem. It gets thrown under the rug, especially thanks to the massive flop that was Rome Total War 2, although the game has actually improved since release because that game's sour kind of legacy, its predecessor in Rome Total War kind of gets forgotten about, so it's definitely worth picking up and giving it a try. Anyway, as always, I've been the Spiff and Brit. If you want another video to watch, then I strongly recommend this one on screen screen now and hey if you're not subscribed do consider it because why not it's absolutely worth your time and anyway I'll see each and every one of you in the next one have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now